Okay, world, how are you doing? This is a federal little open case, open merchandiser. Going to show you how today to change a heating element. And this is the replacement heating element right here. And I will do a we do ohms and I'll get back to you on that. Okay, first thing you do is you uh, open the front, uh, four screws. Oh, got one, two, three, four up here. Take note of the dial. Should be at number 10. Plug it and wet vacuum out all the water out of the condensate heating tray. Makes it a lot easier to take the thing out of there. So, alrighty, so I'll turn it. Support, support it right here, and then take the two top screws out while you're supporting it. And then you reach your fingers in, and there's a floppy kind of cover that you pull towards you a little bit to kind of hold it because uh, it has like an inside piece. And uh, get back to okay, comes down in your hand like this, and this is the floppy inside piece that I was telling you about that. Inside there, and there's the floppy piece that I'm telling you about that you kind of pull out towards you. Okay. Set that aside. Check your condenser at the same time. Clean it if necessary. I just did this condenser on this one, so it should be all right. Um, here's your condensate pan. Got to suck the water out of it first before you go lifting it out. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, wet vac right here. Take the filter out right there so it's not in wet mode. So it's in wet mode. Filter inside is just for dry. Take the filter off. And uh, I'm not gonna do the noisy vacuum, so I'll spare you that. I'll just suck the water out. You'll have to know how to do that yourself. Okay. Here's the condensate, evaporative, the evaporative condensate pan. Remove it. I'm gonna remove it out. Remove it out the back. It's a lot easier. So, unit is unplugged and turned off. It's off and unplugged. Um, okay. Back in the unit, take the cover off. Um, it is unplugged. There's the plug. Uh, one screw at the bottom, lower right, upper right. Screw right here. These screws, three screws. One, two, three. And one, two is missing. Okay, take the back cover off. <coughs> okay, it's the easiest way to take covers off and stuff like that. Use a Ryobi drill, any drill. 
This works fine. Uh, extension. Got a Phillips tip in it. Like that. And uh, start from the bottom. Do one, two on the bottom, one, two on the middle, and then do the last two since the panel. The last two screws should be the always your top screws because you can support the panel with your hand. Okay. Okay, panel's removed. Take your panel off. Clean it with the vacuum. Um, or whatever you want to clean it with. Clean it with the vacuum and 409 and shine it up real nice. Wire in there. And maybe do a little cleaning while you're in here. A little bit. But be very careful touching anything in here. So you don't want to be... Anyways, uh... Condensate heater. I think I well, I think I disconnected it inside. I think I did already. So let me get to this. This is a condensate heater. I'm gonna come out of here. So um, let me see what I'm gonna do here. <coughs> okay. This was my own doing, this little wire tie thing here to keep this wire away from uh, something at the one time I think was, I forget, it's probably keeping it away from this line. Anyways, uh, the next step is to remove this drain very carefully. You want to turn this very carefully so that you don't. just very very carefully so you don't want to turn the top part if it's stuck you got to hold the top part with a channel locks very gently and then wiggle this with your hand so with your right hand you would put channel locks on here and you would hold it with your right hand and with your left hand you would wiggle until it comes out remember there will be water inside this p-trap okay in this trap so, try to get some of the water. That way, it's probably the easiest way. Just to leave, leave the bee trap in the pan <coughs> until you get it out. Okay, next. Okay, this is a condensate pan heater assembly. Um, if you wanted to just buy the whole condensate pan heater assembly, you could do that. They cost about $900. So, <coughs> hence, that's the reason why I just replaced the element. So, just comes out like that. All right, it's gonna sit right here for right now. Now you have your trap out of here. Okay, the little short end is the end that goes up into the, uh, the unit. Remember that, and the long trappy part is the part that sits like this. So we'll go back like this. And there's the water as you saw came out of that. Always a good idea to take these traps over to the sink and wash them out because they do get a bunch of scudge in them. If you have a little toothbrush, uh, it's a good idea to run the toothbrush through it. Give it a little scrub, clean out those drains. You want to clean out those P traps every year or two so you don't end up with a overflow mess. Or you can not clean out the trap and then someday your unit just ends up full of water. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, so let's get back to it. All right. So, this little cover right here, we got two screws right here. One, two, one on the top gets inside here and we got a couple of screws that hold it down here inside here I'm gonna open it up and see what's what so like I said the unit is unplugged right here unplugged okay we're still there's enough room on this one so just do it right here we'll see if we can just change it all right here okay um, here's the 
the little panel, all three screws. I took one out of here, one out of here, one out of here. Uh, they are all the same length. Always pay attention if you have any short screws or long screws. These ones are all the same length. Um, put them somewhere safe. Um, I'm just putting them all right here for now. All my screws. Um, pick a safe spot. Okay. Take off the cover. Actually, put my screws in here. I'm gonna do that. Put them all right like that. Okay, so now we're getting down to the nitty gritty in here. So here's our heating element. This is where I just disconnected it before so I could so the customer could use the unit while it was getting to ordering the part. So here's your heating element right here. So we have to take a couple of these bolts right here. These little bolts right here to take this top little box off and then place the element. And we want to take the hose clamps off of here and probably want to replace those hose clamps. Hopefully I've got new hose clamps on the truck. I usually try to because uh, this whole this is your high, high temperature safety limit. <coughs> and your float switch is under here. This float goes up and down, and this is your high temperature safety. So, uh, all right, let's get to it. I'm gonna take these two bolts out here, the nuts off of here. Okay, these nuts are 11.30 seconds. So I use a 11.30 seconds. Nut driver, Klein tools. I use some clients. 11.32. So. 11.30 seconds, not driver. Take the nuts off. Let's see. There. There. Let's see what we get. off put them in your safe place one of those little magnetic dishes might work good but some of those nuts might be stainless so, eh, so whatever you want to do so uh, oh, this, comes, oh, this comes loose this as you can see your element heating element is secured right here and your float just falls out of its little hole itself and there's a little hole that in the center of that little tube so you can see how the element just bolted to the bottom there so we can push that out of the way for now and uh, just connect our wires <coughs> and let's put a new element on this little dog Okay, always a good idea to uh, uh, to take a photograph or write down on a piece of paper, however you want to do it. It's usually easier with a photograph. Take a photo with your camera to tell you which wires go every, which way, you know? But um, basically I've done this a bunch of times, so I don't need to do that anymore. So. All right, uh, let's get on to it. Okay, so... Once you got your wires disconnected from the heating element here, uh, next step is to remove the hose clamps from the high temperature safety. So we're gonna dis let's disconnect that from the heating element. Okay. Okay. Um, basically, these hose clamps were already pretty much they're rusted out. They're just wasted. They're gone. They're totally toast. They were loose already so I just basically had to unloosen this one just a little bit and I just slid them you can just slide them off and slide them on keep them on the element uh, if they're already wasted you're gonna replace the highly recommend replacing the hose clamps uh, use all stainless steel um, if you can 
Uh, it's really important because they're going to be underwater uh, half of the time and then exposed to the air and everything. So you just want you you want to do that. So anyways, replace your hose clamps. I'm going to. Um, like I said, with all stainless steel hose clamps, stainless steel screw, the band, everything. Okay, and you can get those at any marine, uh, like a West Marine or any, any marine hardware store or any decent hardware store should have all stainless. Okay. All right, Jess, part number. 10-421 Okay, omen out the brand new heater just to make sure everything's cool before you put it in Also, you have a reference point at ambient about 75 degree ambient in this room There's your ohms 17.8 ohms Okay There you go and let's do the old one just for the hell of it while I'm right here and see what it comes out to be. Although when you see physically bad when the thing's wasted like that, when you see it damaged like that, it's junk, period. Doesn't matter what it owns out to be. When you see that, heater's junk. So visual inspection first, if it doesn't pass the visual, if it does pass the visual, then you ohm it out. And we have 11.12 or 12,000 ohms, 13,000. So uh, jumping around, uh, jumping around ohms is also a sign of a he heating element no good. Because as the heating element dries out or gets wet, you'll also it'll the ohm readings will change. So that it doesn't hold rock steady is another uh, sign of a bad element. So if you see one that's jumping around, and so the other one was, see this says 16.9, you might think, oh, it's good, but it's K ohms. You have to watch, that's 1,000 ohms, okay? The other one, let's see what this is. See if I can do this with one hand. Okay. So you want to be right on the element, not on the screw. Right on the metal part. And you will see rock solid 17.8. That's right, just 17.8 ohms. There's no K there. The K stands for a thousand. So you don't want the thousand or the mil or the M. That means million. You don't want that. It should just be 17, oh, 17 or 18 ohms. Okay. Thanks. So there you go. Rock solid. Rock solid. So you just undo them. You just undo them with an open end, open end box wrench. Just use the open end. Um, they might be a little bit snug, but you grab onto the back and hold the element and un undo them. They shouldn't be that tight. They don't. They don't need to be that tight. Uh, you're not holding the world together or nothing. Um, and there's. An insulating wa a rubber washer between here, so uh, you want to make sure you get that there. So let me get this thing apart. <coughs> okay, so um, I got the nuts uh, snug down. Just use a open end wrench on both sides, and uh, you can get in here like that. And just snug them down till they're firm, till they're, you know, 
Well, tight, you know, not, not, you know, you're not, just a little bit of squish here. Just, you'll feel it. They, they, uh, they tighten down nice, you know, they, they snug them down. You snug them down so there's no movement, you know. You're, you're just snugging them down, that's all. So things don't wobble around. So, uh, just a little bit of squish on the pad, you can see. So, uh, here you go. This one's not quite as squished as the other one. No matter. Okay, so now, want to put your screws back in. So, um, actually, not quite yet, because we have a uh, wiring, uh, this ringlet right here uh, is a round ringlet, so it goes through, uh, I believe it went through here. Um, so I'll have to see how I want to wire this in. So you just do it like a series circuit. Um, you'll do one of these, um, this uh, one will go to one side. Your line, you got your, you got your, uh, your new hot, your neutral, and your ground. Your ground is grounded to the case, which is your middle wire. Okay, and then your hot and your neutral, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, only one you have to worry about is that the ground goes, the middle wire goes to the case. And then all you do is just complete the circuit. So if you were to put your hot here and your neutral here, you would energize that heating element all the time and it would never turn off. So all you have to do now is turn it off. So use some device to turn it off. So you keep one, you put your neutral on one side uh, or your hot, doesn't matter. On one, put one on one side. So this is gonna go to here. So. That'll go to there. And then you just make it a series circuit. You, uh, and this one, you wire, this is, should be wired common and normally open, uh, which is the center one. So you'll use the common, which is the left one here, and then normally open. Right there. So what you do is you have this on your neutral on one side and then your hot can go through like you could go through like this you could put one on the high on the high limit go from the high limit through your common and then out of your uh, normally open to your element and that would give you a, a full circuit so this is always closed so this is basically the wire going from here to here to here so and then uh, when the float, when the pan gets full of water, this circuit is normally open, common and normally open. When the micro switch comes up, it goes, the float comes up, it makes a micro switch, makes a circuit. This normally open circuit becomes normally, becomes closed. And now your electricity is flowing from the hot is going through your limit through here, um, through your micro switch, and back out your micro switch to here. So you can wire it any way that it just goes one to the next to the next to the next and just complete a series circuit. Okay, uh, that's it. So when I'm done, I'll uh, add more video. Okay, um, this is all finished. <coughs> Used a couple of hose clamps, new hose clamps, all stainless steel. All, yeah, all SS thing on. So I can turn this thing around. When you, that's what you want to look for. Let's see if I can. All, all 
SS, all stainless steel. So there you go. That's what you're looking for. The all, all SS. That means that the screw and the clamp. Um, most of the time you'll find a stainless steel hose clamp. It'll be just the clamp part and the screw will be steel. That's why the other one's corroded out. So you use uh, marine clamps. Get them at a marine hardware store, like I said, West Marine. Works good, just stock them on the truck. A couple of hose clamps. Um, anyways, so that's that. All set up there. Okay, not touching. There, there. And I got a silicone on the bottom still. Um, but like I said, neutral goes to one side of the circuit. Then like I said, if you went hot and neutral across here, you'd energize the whole the whole element. So you just take your hot wire, go through your limit, through your set of contacts, which are normally open, and they close when the flow comes up, and boom, you put your Put your power to the other side. So that's how you do it. Uh, you always make sure that you have your travel. You gotta have nothing in this area for the float. It's gotta be able to come up and down. And you gotta remember that I'm gonna get the silicone. I'm gonna silicone next, and then you grease up the shaft on your float. And as you're putting it together, you gotta put the float in really carefully when you're tightening it down because that's how it goes together. I'll show you that in a bit. All right. Okay, world. Uh, here we go. It's all put together. Siliconed. Like the factory had it. And now I'm ready to put it back together. Okay. Got a little anti-seize float and let's lever up okay the shaft is all lubed up and ready for insertion here we go There we go. We got amps. 6.5 amps. Saw that. So now it will heat up. So that's the amps. And pardon the vacuum cleaner. It's going to go on for a second here. We want to check the float drop. Make sure it shuts off. So we full float. There we go. Full screen. Okay, dropped out. That's what you want to do. Oh, that's worked once. Pretty confident, hopefully, it works. 
second time. Amps, we got them, 6.55. Amps came back on. That's the second fill. Water, and drop. Okay, working properly. Now we just uh, shut the machine down, unplug it, put it back in. And we're pretty confident that it should work real good. All right, uh, thanks for watching the video. Click like on the video, please. Comment and share the video to the whole world. Everybody with a federal. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, take care. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, world. Uh, trap was back in. outside a little bit which ends up going in the pan but I'm gonna try and take it out again and fix that okay. but uh, basically you just put the trap back in and center it up on the pan good go oh, sorry guys uh, that wasn't uh, quite the end of the video um, have to put the cover on. Uh, remember the cover, the, con the cover is the only thing that the customer really sees in the inside here. So the prettier you make it look, uh, the better he'll think you did a nice job. So, um, and of course, always make your screws line up, uh, you know, crossways, if you can. I don't know how that one is, but up and down. That's just if if you can try to make your uh, screws go with with the uh, body of the unit when you're rebuilding something and uh, came out real nice big hose clamps they're not the super small ones they're the next size up from uh, super small uh, and you notice how I have them mounted so that they're horizontal and the curly part sits underneath and the big curly part acts like little feet and keeps the actual element uh, off of the pan. So optimally, you don't want the element touching the metal pan whatsoever. And in this particular case, it is not, which is very nice. So, um, so yeah, there's no, there's lots of space between everything. And, uh, yep. And nice everything very nice float sits on the bottom of the pan like that and uh, as you saw it goes up and down and hopefully this should work good the last element lasted uh, this place was opened up in 2009 I believe uh, yeah and this is 2017 so they got um eight years out of the element which is good so anything over five uh with a heating element you're going to get between five and ten out of a, one of these heating element but uh so okay okay so that's it then all you do is it's unplugged so um you just drop it back in just back in just like that in the way it came out okay and just got to put the trap back in okay